right. I'll just let you know when you have uh, about five minutes left. All right. Okay. Go ahead. Thank you. You you can hear me, right? Just want to confirm. Yep. That's good. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, first of all, thank the organizer uh, for inviting me to give this lecture. So I'm going to talk about the future physics programs at the STAR. So, you know, the mission of the RIC basically have uh, three building blocks to probe the inner workings of a quarkon plasma, to map the phase diagram of QCD, and also to study the spin puzzle of, of proton. So for the second one, for STAR, in order to map the phase diagram of QCD, we actually had a three detector upgrades uh, recently. Uh, those we call the BS2 upgrades, bin energy scan phase two upgrades. So we have inner TPC upgrades, uh, we have NCAP tunnel flight detector upgrades, we have event plan detector upgrades. All those detector upgrades are functioning very well uh, through the BS2. Here just shows you a few performance plot for the inner TPC plot, and you can see this is acceptance plot. Uh, the blue one, just the TPC acceptance with inner TPC upgrade, you can see we can extend it our pseudo rapidity coverage from one to 1.5. It can also improve the DDX resolution. So you can see that with TPC show blue, the DDX resolution, and then with ITPC upgrade, it's basically include, uh, uh, improve the DDX resolution show black. For the NCAP tunnel flight detector, we actually border it uh, from CBM FAIR collaboration. And you can see the performance is one over beta. Beta is a velocity as a function of uh, momentum. Very nice uh, particle identification in our forward, forward rapidity. And here shows you the efficiency is also very good. It's, uh, it's around 70%. This is already including acceptance dead area effect. For the event plan detector, uh, you can see here shows you event plan resolution with event plan detector. And compared to previously use beam beam counter as even a plan detector, you can see the resolution significantly improved. So all those are really function uh, very well. And we completed our beam end scan phase two data taking in 2021. And here just shows you the data we took. On this plot, uh, the beam and scan phase one data show in gray the statistics. And bin and scan phase two, the collider mode data showing uh, show in red. And you can see it's basically a factor of 10 or even higher improvement at the same energy. In addition, we have a lot of fixed target uh, data showing uh, show in blue. So start bin and scan phase two program, we have a very broad mu B coverage. The mu B is uh, baryon chemical potential. So we are now working on the data production, calibration and data production. We expect to have uh, all the bean and scan phase two data produced by the end of the year. We already released some preliminary results at Quark Matter, but we expect to have much more results coming out uh, next year. Uh, so we, we also have a few recently, uh, very recently, uh, uh, Field detector upgrades is, is actually, we call it star fold upgrades. It includes four system, uh, silicon tracker shown here and a small strip thin gap chamber show here. So these two are tracker. And so it can basically measure the charge of the particle, for example, the momentum information. And we also have a two color meter. So one is the electromagnetic color meter. The other one is a hadron color meter. So all these four systems uh, cover pseudo rapidity range 2.5 uh, to 4. So with this four upgrades, we'll be able to measure jets in this pseudo rapidity range. We have some PID capability. Uh, we can have, uh, measure the charge particle. The momentum resolution can up to 20 to 30 percent level for this PD regime. Uh, it will also enable independent event plan reconstruction as well as improve our trigger capability. So this. Upgrades are important for us to further probe the inner workings of a quarkon plasma and also to study the spin puzzle of the proton. I think Elka probably already talked a little bit about the spin puzzle of the proton, so I'm not going to really talk about that. And I will more focus on uh, probe the inner workings of a quarkon plasma. So star for the upgrades working very well for the last run, run 22. Here just shows you a few picture. This shows you for the color system. 
And here shows you for the silicon tracker before it was inserted its uh, final position. Here shows a small stripping gap chamber and also before it inserted into its final position. And this just shows you a few, uh, you know, really show you uh, people who make it work. So we had an enormous efforts to make four upgrades on schedule during pandemic. It's essentially all the construction were done during pandemic. And as I said, we had first uh, first successful operation of four upgrades, as well as a BS2 upgrades in PP creations 510 GV. So here just shows you, it has been an ama amazing journey uh, for star detector. At the beginning, we only have a TPC. And uh, if you look at the cost, it's probably about 35 million, uh, the initial cost. Over the last 20 years, we have all different kinds of upgrades. And so star detector compared to its original design is totally different. It has a great physics capability. For run 23 to run 25, here shows you our executive summary, what we would like to do. For run 23, that basically next run, uh, which expected to happen like uh, started the run, I think uh, at the end of February. So for run 23, run 25, we would like to take like um, um, 200 GV go go creations. That's of our top energy heavy ion program. Run 24, we would like to take 200 GV PP as well as 200 GV P go uh, creations. The focus for PP and PGO, I just wanted to mention from STAR's point of view, the physics uh, priority point of view, we request sort of a transversely polarized PP and PGO with equal nuclear and nuclear luminosities, which are essential to optimize several critical measurements. So I will put my talk focus on 200 GV GOGO creations. Uh, so here just shows you all the physics program we would like to address for the next three years. And this is for cold QCD and this is for hot QCD program. So moving to GoGo program here, I wanted to mention, just emphasize star detector is no material budget detector. We have an excellent PID capability over extended ETA and PG range. We have improved trigger capability as well as a forward um, PID capabilities. 2325, we would like to take a, like a 20 billion minimum bias data. And for rare, uh, for rare uh, probes, we would like to sample 40 inverse nanobond luminosity. And ITPC, EPD, and ETOF, as I presented earlier, it worked very, very nicely. And also for the upgrades, also working very nicely. And this will be the first time 200 GV go go creations sees all these upgrades. Compared to run uh, 14 and 16, this is a factor of 10 more mean bias data and a factor of 1.5 more luminosity for high PT trigger. So the physics opportunities for run 23, run 25, uh, we would like to address important questions about the inner workings of the QGP. And we would like to address the uh, question according to the time evolution of uh, heavy ion collisions. So we can ask what is the nature of a three-dimensional initial state at weak energies? And what is the precise temperature dependence of, the, of a shear and a bulk of viscosity? Uh, what can be learned about confinement uh, from Charmonia measurements? And what is the temperature of the medium? What are the electrical, magnetic, and the chiral properties of the medium? And also what are the underlying mechanisms of jet quenching at weak energies? What is the precise nature of the transition near mu b around zero? What can we learn about strong interaction? We also would like to inform EIC physics with a photon induced processes. Uh, for example, we would like to probe the gluon distribution inside the nucleus and also search for collectivity and the signatures of a baryon junction. So first I come to constrain the longitudinal structure of initial state. So here we use this observable, the R observable is defined by these two ratios. This VN data is a Fourier coefficient calculated with pairs of particles in different rapidity regions. So here shows you R2 and R3 as a function of rapidity. This is for R2, uh, this is circles and the squares for R3. This is from CMS uh, measurements. You can see two sets of uh, theoretical curve calculations. This, the solid curve basically represents 3D Grassmann model calculations. 
For this model, you can see it, it, it basically can describe the R2 results, but cannot describe the R3 results. The other model is only the nuclear model, and you basically can see uh, it shows more stronger decoration than data. With ITPC upgrades, this shows you our precision projection uh, from our future data set. You can see very, very precise uh, measurements. We will also have a measurements using our forward tracker as well as the event plant detector. So with this, we will have a precise measurements of R sub N over a wide rapidity window and will provide a stringent constraint uh, on the longitudinal structure of initial state. And continue uh, to the initial state, cons constraint the initial state. And recently, uh, Star discovered the bridge winner process and a vacuum by refringence. So the process is the following. The photon, the linearly polarized photon generated by golden nucleus, interacted with another linearly polarized photon and generated by another golden nucleus. They interact with each other and then E plus E minus pair were produced. So we look at the pair PT distribution. It shows pair PT distribution. This one is for UPC, actual peripheral accretions, shows your data. And this one shows you 60 to 80%. And you can see it has a very strong impact of parameter dependence and basically. And we also observed the cosine four data phi uh, modulation. And here shows you uh, the measurements again for UPC and 60 to 80% uh, centrality. So how do we use this kind of process to probe the final state effect? I mean, this process itself is very, very interesting, right? But how do we use this process to probe the final state effect? From all the measurements, uh, as I said, the, the impact of parameter dependence of the transverse momentum distribution of EM production is the key to describe the, the data. And the PT broadening and also the azimuthal correlation of the pairs basically sensitive to the EM field. So we would like to ask the question, is there any sensitivity to final magnetic effect in quantum plasma, for example? So here shows you our study. This is a PT broadening as a function for E plus E minus pair mass. This is for UPC results and this for 60 to 80 percent centrality. Here, the, all these black data points represent the current measurements, the published data, compared to the baseline calculation shown here, the black curve, without any final state effect. And you can see it's basically consistent with data within one sigma level. So currently we do not have precision. We do the same, uh, same thing for cosine four data five modulation. This is for UPC data. This is for 60 to 80% essentiality data compared to the baseline shown here, the black uh, dashed curve. And with the current precision, there's not really no sensitivity. For run 23, run 25, here will be our precision, show here, show the red one. This is will be our future precision. And now you can compare to the baseline and you can see each observables will show more than three sigma deviation between sort of a data and the baseline if the data points uh, uh, do not change. So this is very exciting. I think this basically will serve fundamentally important and unique input to chiral magnetic effect phenomenon. Moving to the next topic is constraint temperature dependence of E tau S. Here just shows you a few parametrization of uh, sort of a viscosity as a function of temperature. For each parametrization, it will give us the different calculation of V2 as a function of eta, and you can sh show uh, different curves. And this just shows you this kind of measurements will be sensitive to the temperature dependence of eta of S. From here, you see the previous uh, Phobos measurements shown here, show the gray uh, box. And this will be our future precision projection. And you can see it's really much more precise measurements. With this kind of precision, helpfully, we can constrain the temperature dependence of each of us. We also would like to use uh, basically Charmonian or Potamonian to further study the confinement and the thermalization. So as you all know that in order to describe the JPSI production, uh, the worldwide data, people have to use the interplay of the color screening and recombination to describe the, the, the data and which is the signature of the confinement. 
So here shows you J psi V2 as a function which transforms momentum. The previous publication showed these are black symbols. You can see the error bar is quite big. Our future precision projection show as uh, the red and the blue. The red one, uh, we use the TPC, time projection chamber, as event plan um, to reconstruct event plan. And uh, the, this uh, blue one, we use event plan detector to reconstruct the event plan. And you can see the error bar is really quite small compared to our existing measurements. The advantage of using event plan detector to reconstruct event plan is that the long flow effect will be negligible. And therefore the systematic uncertainty for these measurements will be quite small. With this kind of precision, particularly in, we are interested in to look at this PT range behavior and to address the combination effect. We will also be able to measure, uh, measure the Psi 2S suppression. So here shows you Psi 2S over J Psi ratio, the precision projection. And we will improve our whoop zone measurements very, very significantly. So here shows you whoop zone. This is a sh shows you whoop zone 1S measurements in red, whoop zone 2S uh, measurements uh, in, uh, in blue. The open, the open symbols show our existing measurements and the solid symbol show our precision projection. So you can see the future measurements will be really much more precise. With all these measurements, we help free to sort of explore or constrain the temperature profile of the median because the different quaconian or uh, basically, yeah, quaconian have a different dissociation temperature and therefore they were expected to have a different suppression pattern. Now coming to constrain uh, this uh, sort of um, electromagnetic effect and also uh, kind of properties of the median. First, we would like to uh, study the global vorticity transfer. So here shows you uh, the high prong global polarization as a function for pseudo uh, rapidity. Existing measurements shown here, show this magenta uh, data, uh, data points and you can see error bar quite a big. And the future precision projection with ITPC shown here, show the red one, the error bar, you can't really see it. It's just within the symbol. So this will be very precise measurements. We for the uh, tracker, for the tracker, and we will have the measurements, all this in this uh, forward the pseudo rapidity as well. From this plot, you see two model calculations. For this brownish curve is driven by initial geometry. So if the this uh, high prong global polarization is driven by initial state, it will sort of predict it goes to higher value when you go to forward rapidity. While if it's driven by final state effect like local thermal vorticity plus hydro, and it will predict it goes down when you go to forward rapidity. With this kind of a precise measurements with ITPC and also with future measurements from our forward detector system, we should be able to tell you know, the trend of the data, how does it look like and therefore to constrain uh, the mechanism of the uh, high prong global polarization. We also would like to study the spin, uh, sort of a, a spin alignment of vector meson in a much more precise fashion. So here shows you rho zero zero uh, as function of centrality. This is from central equations to peripheral equations. We have existing data like a K star shown here. Uh, that's just shows you this is a solid one shows the existing data. And we have a five meson measurements uh, show as the uh, red symbol. And the future precision projection show as open symbols. Currently, in order to explain uh, the five meson uh, results, people have to use the strong vector meson field effect. The argument is the is following. Uh, five meson is composed by S and S bar quark. So basically, um, some uh, theorists believe uh, the, the they will experience a very strong five meson field effect. And uh, that's the so far the only model which can describe uh, star data. However, uh, we do need a much more theoretical input because uh, we would like to see the same model be able to describe you know, all the multiple differential measurements and we don't have that yet. But nevertheless, if we say that model is indeed is true or is important for five meson, then you expect the similar effect for JSI because JSI is uh, composed by C and C bar quark. So should also be able to see that kind of effect. 
So here we show the precision projection. We do not have a JSI measurements yet, but here shows you precision projection and it has this uh, black open uh, symbol. And you can see these will be quite precise measurements. For this precision projection, we assume there's no sort of a spin alignment signal for JSI. If there will be signal, and then this alpha will be even smaller. So with run 23, run 25 data, we should really be able to, you know, help free pin down the mechanism of vector meson spin alignment. Now, we also would like to use the charge dependent uh, director flow to constrain electromagnetic field effect. So here shows you the charge dependent V1 slope between K plus and K minus. Uh, as a function of centrality, again, this is from central to peripheral collisions. And here, the positive value observed in central collisions is attributed to transported quark effect. For the peripheral collisions, we observe the sort of the value is less than zero, and this is due to electromagnetic effect. With run 23, run 25 projection, uh, the precision projection will show as this uh, solid symbol. And you can see this is will be much more improved measurements. We will have a more than five sigma difference between K plus and K minus in peripheral uh, collisions. We will also uh, be able to have a much more precise measurements for multi uh, strange particles. So here shows you cosine minus, cosine plus V1 precision projection as function for rapidity. Here shows omega minus and omega plus. So the existing data precision projection show as this magenta band, while this uh, green band show our future precision projection. So okay. we, five, five minutes. Oh, okay. So we also would like to um, basically use uh, dileptons to further study chiral properties. Here shows you our precision uh, projection. This is an inclusive dielectron precision projection. And you can see the uh, data divided by cocktail. The cocktail is basically represent all this non hydronic contribution without hot dense median contribution. So data divided by cocktail, here you can see uh, the enhancement, the low mass enhancement will represent the hot dense median effect, as well as intermediate mass regime, the enhancement. For the low mass regime, we will be able to constrain the lifetime of the median and also provide a stringent constraints uh, for theorists to establish color symmetry restoration and will be around zero. For intermediate mass regime, uh, from the excess, uh, we uh, would like to really constrain the temperature of the hot dense uh, quark-gun plasma. The intermediate mass regime will serve as direct thermometer to measure the temperature. Uh, we would like to advance our jet quenching uh, measurements. The first one example show you the semi-inclusive gamma jet suppression, the R the I IAA. The existing precision projection show as this uh, red one, and then green one show our future sort of a precision uh, projection. You can see it's much more improved measurements. Not only that, we can extend our measurements to higher uh, jet PT regime. We will also be able to further study the gamma jet accompanianity. Here shows you precision projection, the gray uh, box shows you our existing data, and the red one shows you our future precision projection. We are particularly interested in this large angle scattering behavior. And we can also improve our jet substructure measurements. And at the start recently, we have quite a few beautiful jet substructure measurements. Typically, we use this kind of a uh, uh, leading subject and sub-leading subjects to do, to do the study. We have a PT sharing can be defined by this uh, Z variable. We also have this uh, theta variables. And here just shows you the kinematic coverage. This is a theta versus jet PT. The existing data kinematic coverage show as a blue and the future, future uh, kinematic coverage is shown in, uh, in green. And you can see the future can extend the measurements really up to a much wider kinematic regime. We will also be able to improve the opening angle resolution by a factor of four. And this is very, very important for us to uh, sort of a probe the coher coherence versus decoherence effect. So since I only have uh, five minutes, let me just uh, show you a few examples of uh, sort of uh, uh, using uh, star current measurements to inform the ERC physics. So here we use a photon 
sort of uh, uh, induced processes. So as I said, we discovered the breadwinner process. So we can use the linearly polarized photon generated by golden nucleus and then it interacts with the goton nucleus through this polymeron exchange. For this case, it's rho zero, decay to pi plus and then pi minus. It can also be JSI and then decay into E plus E minus. We would like to use this process to probe the gluon distribution inside the nucleus. And Star actually observed the significant uh, uh, cosine two data phi as a uh, modulation in pi plus pi minus pairs. Um, as a function of PT, and which shows defective pattern. So here basically shows you uh, the measurements in red. Compared to theoretical model calculations, basically theoretical model take into account linear polarized photon, and then interact with the saturated gluons. And you can see if they use different scheme depth, they give you different uh, calculation results. That means this kind of a measurements will be sensitive to the nuclear geometry and the gluon distribution and which is closest to, to uh, grown 3D tomography at EIC. With RAN23, RAN25, we can improve these measurements very significantly. Most importantly, we will also be able to measure the JSI, the precision projection show, uh, show as this uh, blue, that's a precision uh, projection. With this kind of a, a precision projection, um, we really help to probe the gluon special distribution. JSI is much cleaner probe is because it's much heavier. Therefore, when you compare to theoretical model calculations, it's, uh, it's basically much cleaner probe. We can further study small system collectivity using the gamma A process and, and also look for signature of a baryon junction. But uh, I don't have time to go through the detail. If you have a, any question, you can ask me. So to summarize round 23 to round 25, I think STAR is in an excellent uh, position to address many, many important questions about the inner workings of the QGP and also to inform the ESC physics with photon induced processes. And all our proposed measurements based on our detector performance in past years and all for the capabilities. So STAR will be ready for physics data taking within a week for next year. Uh, for the next few slides, I do want to mention briefly uh, on our PGO program. I think this is also important to have ion community to constrain the nuclear PDF. And this, is, this shows you the capability using direct photon measurements. And this shows you our PGO uh, for direct photon as a function of PT. And uh, after including the RAN25 data, the precision projection will show as this uh, dark uh, bluish. Uh, uh, bars. So what is the impact on theoretical model calculations? So after you included RAN24 data, and here shows you precision projection, uh, sort of uh, to constrain the theoretical model. And this is uh, for RPGO as a function of uh, PT. And this is for the gluon nuclear modification uh, factor modification. So this will be the precision. So this will be really nice. It will contribute to a stringent test of universality of nuclear PDFs when combined with data from EIC. We will also be further study the QCD long linear uh, effects. Currently at a star using for the meson spectrometer, we have a for the pi zero pi zero correlation. If we go to this kinematic range, it's a trigger one of the uh, PT of the pi zero. Pi zero is two to 2.5 GeV. Associated PT is one to 1.5 uh, GeV. And this shows you PGO, this is P-aluminum, and this is a PP. So you can see that in P-aluminum and the PGO case, the away side area is significantly suppressed. So this, this while the pedestal and away side width change very little. So this kind of uh, uh, measurements will probe X down, X down to the 10 to the minus three. And with four the upgrades, we have significant advantage and because for the upgrades, we not only have a for the electromagnetic color meter, we have a for the hadron color meter, we also have a for the tracker. So we can have all different observables like a gamma jet, dijet, and charge dihadron to characterize this nonlinear effect. Here shows you kinematic coverage, eta equal four. This is a this is basically star for the uh, uh, detector coverage. And uh, here shows your perturbative scale. Here shows your saturation scale. So from this plot, you can immediate, immediately see that star for the upgrades sitting in the sweet spot 
to probe this sort of a long linear regime. So we really look forward uh, to the RAN24 uh, data taking. And the last example, I think it's relevant to heavy ion community is uh, to probe the toroidal vert vorticity using the peak accretions. So everyday life, you probably observe the toroidal vortex structure is like smoke lean. In central peak accretions and due to the strong shield field effect, we expect to have a radial gradient, significant radial gradient uh, flow profile. And, and our colleagues together with, I think, a Chunshen a theorist and a few other people, they actually plug all these into the real Monte Carlo or, or um, theoretical calculations. With this radial gradient flow profile, you can see it will give us very significant ring structure defined by here. They can also do the exercise, just assuming Bjorken flow profile, and, and then the ring structure will basically consistent with zero. So at the start, we sort of uh, did the exercise with 300 million PGO central events at each magnetic field polarity. This will enable us to measure this sort of a ring structure parameter at 1% level with a three sigma uh, significance. I think which provide a great opportunity for us to discover a normal vertical configuration uh, in the fluid. So I think this is all I have. Uh, I hope uh, you just enjoy our future physics program. Thank you. All right, thanks. Um, do we have any questions? I think we have time for probably one or two. Nobody, okay. I do have a couple of questions myself actually. Um, I was wondering if you go back to the um, to the sort of early in your talk, the gamma gamma uh, to EE, you mentioned that it's a, a, a probe of the final e, uh, electromagnetic fields in the plasma. Yes. Yeah. So um, I guess a question here is, so the black, solid black on the left is just a QED model. So it doesn't include any of these final state effects. Exactly. This is just a baseline calculation, no final state effect included. So do you have a sense of how large maybe those final state effects would be such that you need a certain experimental precision to be able to, to have a handle on them? Because I mean, it could, it could, it could be of course that the, you know, there's some limitation in the, in the model, the QED model that makes it, it you know, wrong or something like that. And, and once that's fixed, it matches the data better. So I'm just wondering what you, know, what you kind of expect for the scale of, of the, the final state interaction effects. Um, we, so in our sort of, uh, um, first publication for this 60 to 80% central the PIL publication, um, we actually, um, at that time, the QED, this is a, this is a really defined calculation, the QED calculation, which take into account the impact parameter dependence. So this only give us one sigma effect. Mm -hmm. But if you ask the question, if you say you just wanted to do the exercise, uh, how much magnetic effect you will need, final state effect you will need to describe the sort of uh, the central value of the data points. I think that's your question, right? Yeah. And I think we, we did rough estimation is probably on the order of the magnetic effect, which will be sort of a consistent with um, uh, like uh, many people's calculation, like Dima Kazib's calculation, which is needed to explain the CME effect, right? That I can just give you that kind of answer. Okay. However, however, we are experimentalist, right? Mm -hmm. One sigma effect, we 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 never take it seriously. Like one sigma effect, you have to really have a much more precise measurements. So one sigma effect, if you use an experimentalist way, can happen every day. So we can't say, you know, this is this is a central value is deviated from QED, and therefore you fear there's a significant final state effect. We just don't have that sensitivity. So we need a 23 to 25 to pin down that answer. Yeah. Cool. Any other questions? All right, well, let's uh, thank Li Xuan again, uh, and let's move to, uh, to the final talk in this session. Um, so is it Antonio here? Sorry, there's a question by Gabriel. Ah, okay. Please. Hi. Uh, uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you for the talk. 
Uh, I had some internet instabilities. I don't know if you uh, said that in more detail, but uh, you also, also at Star, you have some uh, spin structure of Proton program, right? So is, yes, is there- we do. Is there, so uh, is, is there, what is the difference between this, the, the STAR program and the, and the EAC program? Is there any options that you, that you have that, 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 is there anything that you explore that they can't or, or not? That's a very good question. So um, the best person to answer that question will be Elka, the previous speaker, but let me try. Uh, for the SPIN program, um, what is STAR trying to do for the next few years is to really get the results uh, from our RUN 2017 and RUN 22 data. And for RUN 22 data, which will be with fold upgrades. Um, a lot of physics we can do with fold upgrades, we can use that actually to bridge the rig physics sort of a PP spin program uh, to the EIC uh, program. And I think uh, uh, some of the PP 200 GV uh, results will have a best overlap uh, with EIC kinematics. EIC probably can do you know, much better job, but uh, in order to test sort of a universality, the PP program is actually very, very important. I did not talk about that, but I specifically only talk about the heavy ion uh, sort of uh, uh, related uh, results, but I can point you if you're interested, you can, I can point you, you know, the slides we have for PP and the PA program, the spin related. I want to say our PP will be better compared to the EIC. It basically provides an overlapping sort of a climatic regime uh, when we compare uh, EIC. And this is important, right? If you want to test all those universality, you would like to have, you know, the same mechanism which can work both in PP and uh, and also uh, EP, right? That kind of thing. Okay, thank you. Okay, thanks a lot. Um, maybe we can move on here since we're 